Kia ora and welcome to Baha'i on Air. We are filming from our annual Baha'i Summer School in Hamilton. My name is Kirsten Zemke and often as a part of our summer school program we invite an exciting guest from overseas to energize us and inspire us with new ideas and this year we're very excited to have our, as our guest Tom Price, Tim Prince, T-Dog, <laughs> T-Pain, T-Rex, yeah. Dr. Tom. What would you like us to call you? Oh, uh, you could call me Tom. Tom, yes. Tom Price. So um, before we get started, maybe tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm, uh, I'm visiting here uh, in New Zealand for the first time in 16 years. I've come back to this beautiful country, but I did live in Australia for 17 years, although I was born and raised in the United States. I currently live in Los Angeles, where I work primarily as a record producer and a composer, conductor, musician, but I'm currently writing a book. Well, that sounds very exciting. Music producer, can you tell us a bit about stuff that you've done? Well, you probably don't remember now. I, I uh, worked for many years with a singer named Billy Field who had a song named Bad Habits and a couple of other ones. I wrote that song, Bad Habits, with Billy and produced his record. I work mainly as a, a production manager, a producer. Sometimes I'm an orchestrator or an arranger. So now when you were last in New Zealand, many years ago, you, you put together a choir for what we call the Pacific Horizons Conference. Oh yes, I remember the Pacific Horizons Conference. It was so much fun. We gathered together, I think we just had a few days, and we rehearsed every day, and then in the final evening we had this big concert. And this was exciting for me because there were so many different cultures represented there. They came from all over the Pacific. A lot of Polynesians were there, and they sing beautifully. As I want to mention, this uh, group here have only been singing together for three days. But when you hear them tonight, you will think that they've been singing for at least four days. They are singing. <laughs> I was there at that time, and I know you probably do this with other events. You incorporate different styles of music into the performance. Well, usually whoever I can, you know, use. At the Pacific Horizons Conference, we had a singer named Dash Crofts, who was a pop singer uh, from the group Seals and Crofts, who had hits like Summer Breeze and so on. <laughs> So he came out, he has a beautiful voice, and we used him. We had a Persian singer named Ava. And she sings traditional Persian music and even popular Persian music. And when we've been to other parts of the world, when we go to Asia, we'll sing you know, Chinese or Japanese music. When we go to Eastern Europe, we sing music in that style. So we, we believe that music is not just a universal language, but it is actually language of the human soul. Different religions have different approaches to music, mm -hmm. uh, and so what's sort of the Baha'i teachings about music? Well, we believe that music is like a ladder uh, that can lead you to God. It's a, it's a ladder that leads you to heaven. And we all know this. Music uplifts our souls when we're sad or angry and we hear music. It, it calms us. It relaxes us. And so we try to use music to bring out the higher nature of people, the, to, to attract them towards world peace, towards God, towards good sentiments, towards the oneness of the human race and so on. And music can do this. To me, one of the beautiful things about the Baha'i faith is our Baha'i writings. And, and you as a composer, I know you've set some of these Baha'i writings to music. In many of our uh, activities, we like to sing the sacred text of the world's religions. And we will sing from the Bible and from the New Testament, the you know, Old Testament, the Quran, and even the s scriptures of other religions, Buddhist and Hindu. And the Baha'i writings are very beautiful. Uh, they were originally written in either Arabic or Persian, and they've been translated into almost every language of the world. And they have some beautiful sentiments, so sometimes we just take a sentence or two or you know, a few phrases and sing those so it can bring out the meaning of those. And I have several recordings uh, of choral music that's set just to that, because in our Baha'i temples, we sing just with the human voice and no instruments. Uh, 
you mentioned the Baha'i House of Worship, and I know you talked about that a bit in your talk here at the summer school. Do you want to explain what is the house of worship and its function? They're a place where everyone can come together to worship the one God, irrespective of what background they come from, what religion, and where it can be the center of service to humanity, to be of benefit, to help uh, the aged, the poor, the sick, and so on. Because Baha'is believe that it's not enough just to worship God. Worship has to be combined with serving mankind. And so the Baha'i House of Worship is a center both for worship and service. When you say praying or worship, it probably means slightly different things to different people. So maybe explain what the Baha'i concept is of prayer and worship. Well, we believe prayer is uh, speaking to God, praying uh, to the one God that we all, some call him Allah, some call him God or Jehovah. And, and this one God is the creator of, of all. We don't even believe that there's a difference in religion, that there's really only one religion and that all the founders of the world's religions, Jesus and Moses, Muhammad, Buddha, Krishna, Abraham, they were all part of a single religion. And it's only man that has divided these religions through misunderstanding. So we believe in the unity of all religions. We believe in the unity of all mankind. And so we try to create an environment where all peoples can come together and worship God with this common uh, belief in the one true God. Our temples have nine sides, but they also have nine doors. So you can enter them from any side, but they have a dome. And the dome at the top has the name of God. So everyone can come from all sides, but when they come in and they look up, there's just the one God. Now you mentioned different religions, and, and for some people, it seems that religion almost is having a detrimental effect to world peace. So how would you respond to that? Oh, well, I don't think religion ever had the intention of causing disunity. But people, people sometimes can take something and make it the cause of disunity when it, when it was never intended to be there. Religion has always been there to cause unity. In fact, as Baha'is, we believe that if religion doesn't bring about unity, it's better to have no religion at all. So this is what we are working towards to unite people irrespective of their background or their religion or their race or their nation. These things that we use to divide us, they're part of the past of mankind. They're part of the immaturity of, the, uh, of humanity. You know, when, when a child is immature, he gradually grows up. The world is growing up today. And we're realizing that unity is the most important thing. And this message is resonating throughout the world. Baha'is love your music and, and you've used your skills to serve the faith and I know one of the things many Baha'is remember you for was putting a large choir together for what we call the Baha'i World Congress. The Baha'i World Congress was a highlight of my life because we had this huge conference or congress in New York City in New York in 1992 because 1992 was the hundredth anniversary of the passing of the founder of the Baha'i faith, Baha'u'llah, who we uh, believe is a messenger of God like Jesus and Muhammad and Buddha. He passed away in 1892 and so in 1992 we had this big centenary celebration. 35,000 people came from every uh, spot on the earth and they gave me a large choir, 420 singers and an orchestra of 92 players and we wrote music especially for that occasion and this uh, conference was broadcast live on satellite throughout the world. How do you feel about the pressure of composing for something that's so big and Baha'i history? It may have been a bit of a pressure, but it was also a whole lot of fun. It was a lot of joy because as you're composing the music, you're imagining all these people coming together and seeing that audience of 35,000 people and you, the significance of the occasion causes you to really uh, be inspired, I hope. But in any case, we had a lot of fun doing it and it was just a whole lot of joy. That whole year, leading up to it. I remember we were working so hard on the music it was just just like living in heaven the whole year.